So in this section, we're going to take a look at why metamorphism occurs and the changes that occur inside the rock due to the different agents of metamorphism. So as I mentioned before, the main agents of metamorphism are going to be heat and pressure. Heat and pressure don't have to both happen equally the same. It can always be one more than the other, and we're going to see how that works. Of course, heat and pressure is also related to compression and shear. So at this point in the semester, you should always recognize that plate tectonics is pretty much always the culprit for just about everything that happens geologically. And as we said, hot water is definitely the necessary agent because that's what's going to facilitate a lot of the mineral growth and the mineral change inside of that rock. Because remember, it's happening in the solid state. Now, what can become very complicated is that we can have a metamorphic rock that gets re-metamorphosed. And, of course, then it can get re-metamorphosed and re-metamorphosed. And that sometimes gets to become very difficult when you're trying to ascertain what happened first, second, or third to these rocks. Let's take a look at each one of these agents. So, one of the causes of metamorphism is heat. Most of our metamorphism is going to happen between 250 and 850 degrees Celsius which this should make sense because if we come back down and think about Bowen's, di Bowen's uh, reaction series. Remember over here we have our, let me extend that a little higher, our mafic rocks and we have our felsic rocks. Remember the bottom of Bowen's is quartz and quartz forms at about 600 degrees Celsius. So if we have a metamorphic rock that's say composed of sand, right, of quartz sand, and we're going to metamorphose it. Remember, metamorphism happens in the solid state. So that means this rock didn't reach above that 600 degree mark. Because if it would have, then it would have melted. Right? Then we'd be talking about an igneous rock. So this temperature of 250 and 850 degrees Celsius should make sense. Right? If you understand how Bowen's works. However, if we're talking about a higher grade metamorphic rock like a basalt or a gabbro or even a peridotite, Remember, those form at much higher temperatures. So, of course, we can get metamorphic rocks that do occur a little bit higher. The main sources of heat for metamorphism are, of course, the geothermal gradient, which, remember, is the deeper down we go in the Earth, the hotter things become. Of course, magmatic intrusions are going to be an excellent source of heat as well, especially if you're a rock sitting right next to a magmatic intrusion. And then compression. As you squish something, the atoms are rubbing on each other, which causes friction. Friction generates heat, so that can also cause metamorphism as well. And don't forget that where the temperature changes occur, they don't always have to occur down really deep inside the Earth. It all depends where you are tectonically. For example, if you were in Yellowstone, right, that metamorphism doesn't have to happen very deep at all because you have that magmatic intrusion sitting there, right, causing a lot of heat. So metamorphism um, can also happen due to pressure changes as well. We know that the deeper you go inside the earth, the pressure increases, right, because you have all those rocks sitting on top of you. So to kind of, uh, for you to gauge how, what the pressure is like underneath the earth, one atmospheric pressure equals 14.7 pounds per square inch. So that means your whole life you've been working out by holding up the atmosphere. Right, the atmosphere is pushing down on your shoulders at 14.7 pounds per square inch. You've probably heard of atmospheric pressure before. If you've ever watched the news right, on the weather segment, they always talk about right, the atmospheric pressure. Well, if you put that inside the Earth, okay, for every kilometer you go down inside the Earth, the pressure increases 270 to 300 bars of pressure, which one bar is almost equal to one atmospheric pressure. So you can see that the, the um, pressure inside the Earth definitely occurs at a much higher range. And most of this metamorphism occurs in the 2 to 12 kilobar range. Okay, so this is quite a lot of pressure. But do remember that an increase in pressure basically squashes a rock, right? So here if we have a rock that starts out this size and we pack it under pressure, it might end up this size, which means that all of our atoms are getting packed tighter and tighter and tighter in, which means it creates a much denser mineral, which is how we get things like you see in this picture, like garnets. Of course, both temperature and pressure change inside the Earth. 
Okay, remember that's all going to be dependent upon uh, your tectonic setting. And of course, every mineral, as you learn in the mineral chapter, has a different range of stability, okay, depending on that temperature and pressure. So just about every mineral has these phase change diagrams. And we mentioned phase change in the previous video, where we started out with andalusite, which is a fairly common mineral. Okay, you see some aluminum silicate here. Um, that starts out, right, fairly low pressures. If we take andalusite and bury it, okay, now it's under much higher pressures, it's going to turn into kyanite, which basically, like I said, the chemical bonding structure just kind of rearranges itself to um, handle the higher pressure, but it's still the same chemical formula. Now, if I take that kyanite and expose it to high temperatures, it turns into a rock we call sylmanite. Sylmanite is also still the same mineral, right? So it has the same um, chemical formula, same identity, but it has a different bonding structure. Now this becomes important because let's say I'm in the middle of Nebraska and I find a whole bunch of sylmanite from 300 million years ago. Well, that tells me something happened in that region, right? To cause extremely high temperatures and high pressures. So basically, this is how I can start using those clues to help figure out what happened to the Earth at some given point in the past. So as we bury our rocks, okay, or we'll see as two continents collide on, into each other, they experience differential stress. Differential stress means that there's stress greater in one direction than the other. So here, for example, we have a house of cards, and if your mean little brother comes by and squashes it, Right? That means, obviously, the pressure is much greater in this direction than the side directions. Okay? That's differential pre uh, pressure. So if we take a look, there's two kinds of differential stress. The first is what we call normal stress, which is where it's going to operate perpendicular to the surface. So tension would be pulling apart. Okay, so as we pull apart, right, that's going to split in half. So notice that's perpendicular. It's going to stretch the rock. Compression, right, as you see in this picture down here, this nice round ball of wax, we compress it and you see now it's elongated, again, perpendicular, right, to that stress. Then the last kind is shear stress, which is where I'm going to take a rock or an object and I'm going to pull the top part of it in one direction and the bottom part in another direction. So this is definitely what we can see at, say, a transform boundary. And if we go back, right, and we think about these other ones, your attention is what you see at a divergent boundary, and compression is what you see at a convergent boundary. So again, it's always important to tie all these back to your different um, plate tectonic boundaries. As we also mentioned, especially when you have rocks that are experiencing high pressure, this will cause that preferred orientation. When you have high temperature associated with the high pressure, this will cause our rocks to undergo what we call plastic deformation, which means the rocks are going to change shape, but they're not going to break, okay? So they can bend much easier. And this is exactly how we form that preferred orientation you see below. So that plastic deformation here, as you can see, is where we start out. It's really pretty simple with a round grain and as as it gets squashed, you can see it's not so round anymore. However, that mineral didn't break, okay? So that tells me that there's a much higher temperature there. And as we saw in the last video, this is exactly how we form that preferred mineral orient, or, uh, orientation. The first way, right, is as we have hot water working through the system, we dissolve the sides of these grains and maybe start, as you see here, forming new minerals. But remember, this is not due to plastic deformation because you can still see the roundness there of the minerals on the inside. However, with plastic deformation, we start out with these round grains and we squish it and you see they're not round anymore. But they didn't break. 